Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 135, Dealing with Class Clowns. I am your host, your your ghost. Oh, no, wait, that's the wrong podcast. (laughs) I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my funny and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing all right. So you were back full-time in school this week. How'd it go for you? Um... I don't really like it because yeah. I don't want to be around people. Yeah, but, I can't say oh well. I blame you. I'm sure we'll muddle through this like we have so much during these difficult times. Yep. I feel like Winston Churchill. <laughs> anyway, so what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about class clowns. Yes, we are. So what does it mean to be a class clown? And why do kids play the class clown? What can parents do if their kids are labeled as class clowns? And how should other students deal with class clowns? That is what we're talking about on this week's episode of Insights into Things. But before we get into that, I do want to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens, Video versions of all the network's podcasts are listed as Insights into Things. And you can find us anywhere you get a podcast. Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, etc., etc. I would also invite you to write into us. Give us your feedback. Tell us how we're doing. Give us your own suggestions on what you'd like us to talk about here and what topics you'd like us to cover. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. On Facebook, you can find us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can get all that and much more on our official website at insights into things.com. Are we ready? Yes, we are. All right. So, what is a class clown? Now, the, the pure strict Dictionary definition from Merriam-Webster says that a class clown is a student who tries to make other students laugh. And and that really sums it up. But I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the definition. And I did a little bit more research. And according to a website called ThoughtCo.com, class clowns are often natural-born leaders. They are individuals who really want and need attention And therefore, dealing with class clowns centers on a way to channel their energy and need for attention into more positive attitudes. So, what does it mean to be a class clown? This comes to us from understood.org. So, kids act like a class clown in a lot of different ways, which can include giving joking answers when their teacher calls on them, wearing clothes that are extremely loud, silly, or even offensive making a noisy entrance when they come into the classroom, or dropping things and making a big deal out of picking them up. When kids act this way, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem, but it can often create problems. Goofing around all the time can disrupt class and annoy the teacher. It can lead to being disciplined and can impact grades as well. Being the class clown can also affect your child's social life. Sometimes, other kids think it's funny and want to be around your child. But often, kids are turned off by clownish behavior and think it's weird or annoying and not funny. So why do kids play the class clown? So there's a lot of reasons why kids clown around like this. If they're getting a positive response, they might just like the attention. 
and I, I, you know, in my experience, I find that to to have been a lot of the things that motivated class clowns. Mm. But that's not always the case. Kids who have trouble with self control may have a hard time resisting the urge to do or say something they think is funny. And that's often true with kids with attention deficit hyperactive disorder or ADHD. If the thought enters their mind, they act on it without stopping to think about the consequences. Some kids act up in class not to draw attention to themselves, but away from things they're struggling with. They clown around to hide challenges. Some of the things that they might try to cover up are anxiety, bullying, learning different uh, differences or difficulties, trouble with focus or organization, being impulsive or hyperactive, trouble with social skills, stressful situations at home, or even low self-esteem. Kids aren't usually trying to be difficult. They're just trying to cover up their weak spots. It's better to loudly burst through the classroom door and have everyone laugh than to be laughed at because you lost track of time and are always late. Clowning around is often a way to get ahead of criticism. So, okay, that's a very good definition of what we're going to refer to as class clowns. Do you, and don't name any names, but do you know any class clowns that you have to kind of experience in your day-to-day activities at school? Well, I definitely think everyone kind of has to experience class clowns during high school, and I definitely have my fair share of people who I've met that, or people who are in my classes that definitely fit the definition of a class clown. Do you think you're a class clown? Probably not, because I don't really like the attention, and I never really try to crack jokes all that much, especially not to interrupt class. Okay. Do you find that you ever have a need to cover up any of these things, like anxiety or bullying or uh, trouble with social skills or anything like that? Do you, do you find that you're ever in a situation where there's a need for you to cover those up for a comfort level? I mean, like, I would tell jokes to my friends to kind of just cover up a bad feeling I'm feeling, but like, I don't really do it in front of a whole whole group of people. It's usually just a couple friends. I make a slightly dark joke, but that's kind of it. Okay. Well, what happens if something embarrassing happens to you? Like I know, you know, a lot of times we'll make mistakes and and goofs and, and miss lines on the podcast and stuff. And I'll kind of, you know, go along with those, you know, go with the punches and laugh about them and kind of highlight them out of the, out of fun. And you tend to not like to do that. Why is that? I don't know. I just don't really find like humor as a way to cope with that kind of stuff, or at least it's not the first resort I have. The first resort for me is kind of just to curl up into a ball and just pretend that I didn't exist. I'm not sure that's any healthier, to be honest with you. (laughs) I know, I know. It's probably not the most healthy way to deal with it, but a lot of the times I just kind of want to walk away from the scenario and just forget about it. Right. Well, and I'll I'll be honest, I don't think I was ever a class clown, um, but I I was was not above uh, injecting humor into situations. You know, one of the things with me is there's a – there's a rush of adrenaline when you can make someone smile or make someone laugh. Um, and I think that's sort of what drives me to, to do some of the things that I do is I like entertaining people, right? You know, I, I think most people kind of get a rush from that. And usually what happens a lot of times when I employ my sense of humor, it's a very self-deprecating sense of humor. And part of that is to kind of diffuse situations. You know, I'm a big guy. People look at me and they either are A, intimidated by me, or B, outraged at my size, or or whatever it is. And having been a big person my entire life, people always made fun of me. And there's a certain point in time in your life where you, you let that sort of thing get to you and you worry what other people think. And then there's another point in, in you reaching your life where if you beat them to the punch, then you diffuse anything that they say. So a lot of times my self-deprecating humor is really that. It's, it's me diffusing the situation before someone has a chance to try to capitalize on it. Mm. 
And that's what I do with our mistakes here. You know, if we miss a line or I flub something or I hit the mic, you know, make fun of it. Enjoy it. Don't try to hide it. You know, embrace it. We're all humans. We all make mistakes. So there's nothing wrong with it. And when you kind of turn it into a comical situation, people can laugh about it, enjoy it. It makes you look more human. I guess the reason I'm probably not a class clown is that I don't really find myself particularly funny. That, and I think that was why I wasn't a class clown either. Like I had about a 30% hit rate on jokes. I would, I would say something that was funny and I might get a laugh out of people. And then I'd always try to follow it up. And there's a line that you, that you shouldn't cross where you're working the crowd too much. And I, I had a, in my youth, I had a nasty habit of crossing that line and it wasn't inappropriate or anything. It was just, you cross that line and it just wasn't, you, the joke falls flat and it's not funny anymore. So it's very, it's very situational a lot of times. Um, but nowadays I know I'm not funny and that's, what's funny about some of the stuff that I do. You know, I, I, a master of the dad jokes. Yeah. So anyway, so that's what we're talking about with class clowns. I, I think there's definitely a place for class clowns. Um, we had several of them when I was in school. Um, and they all kind of fit into the categories we talked about here. Do you have a lot of class clowns in your, in your school? I mean, like there's always kids that like try to crack jokes and make everyone laugh. So, and like, yeah, there are definitely kids that kind of just act out to a point where like, yeah, they can definitely be considered class clowns. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say there's a decent amount, uh, in my school. Yeah, it was funny, like, going through school myself, there was always the joke class clown person. Then you had the props class clown person, you know, the kid that would uh, bring in the hand buzzer or the, the plastic poo and stuff like that and get jokes that way. And then you had, like, the physical class clown, you know, the kid that was always falling down or falling off chairs or leaning back, and you know. So you kind of had an array of class clowns and they were all almost like different performance artists hmm. and they kind of all had their own little thing. And some of the kids who were class clowns were in like drama club and stuff like that. Um, so it was almost, it was almost like a Broadway show where each person has their own talents kind of, hmm. um, it's a shame that like they never would coordinate or anything like that together. And I always only had one in any class. You never had more than one. And I and you may have. I don't notice. I didn't think I noticed it. But I think you probably didn't just because you didn't want one showing the other up. Because they are they're attention hounds. They go for all the attention. So anyway, so it could possibly be a problem. There are some downfalls to it. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. And we're going to talk about what you could do as a parent if your kids are class clown. So we'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about dealing with class clowns. And now we're going to talk about what you can do as a parent to deal with your, student, your kid who's a class clown. So when your child acts out to get attention, there are ways you can work on the behavior. Some of these include keep an eye on your child's behavior and look for patterns. Share what you're seeing with the teacher so you can work together. 
Ask your child how things are doing at school. Identify your child's strengths and give them positive praise. Help improve your child's self-esteem and find activities your child enjoys and is good at. You can also, also, kids sometimes need help understanding the consequences of their behavior. They may not see the effect of their clowning around it's having. Or they may feel embarrassed by their behavior, but not know what to do instead. During a calm time, talk to your child about how others are reacting and what would be a better way to act. If your child's been clowning around to cover up challenges, you might get similar behavior when you try to talk about it. You may have a couple of shorter conversations instead of just one. Space them out so your child has time to think about what you've said and how to do things differently. And if you think your child might be struggling at school, talk to your, te- to your child's teacher. The teacher may be able to tell you about challenges your child is having. And that's one thing I have to say that I've been very impressed with your school this year is that the teachers are very supportive of the students. And, you know, obviously we're not in a situation where you're a class clown or it's affecting your your schoolwork or anything. But it's important to to keep that communication open with your teachers no matter what. I mean, you even had uh, specific incidents earlier this year where that line of communication proved to be very helpful. Do you see the teachers in school doing much to kind of curb any of the the behavior out there that's coming from class clowns? I mean, like, a lot of the times they kind of, like, try to curveball, like, after the class kind of laughs. So they kind of just curveball it back to the lesson so everyone can kind of still continue with the lesson. Um, They might sometimes try to get um, the class clowns to participate so they know, like, they're doing it right. I mean, even today, like, there were, like, like, I've had specific instances where two of the students who were in this scenario today um, had been class clowns, and, like, they were kind of on their phones, which, like, yeah, you probably shouldn't be doing that, and my teacher basically kind of just took the phones and basically just asked them what they were doing, what we were basically learning, and so that, you know, they were able to be kept on track. Right. Now, do you find that kids that are class clowns are disruptive in class? Uh, kind of. I feel like sometimes they go for opportunities. This one specific class clown, like, every time someone asks them a question, they kind of, like, when the teacher normally asks them a question, they kind of use it as an opportunity to make people laugh. I've had, like, a lot of instances in my history class where this class clown was asked a question and kind of tries to make other people laugh. Now, do you think they're trying to compensate for something or cover something up? Do they know the subject matter they're talking about? Or is it, you know, just they want the attention? Um, I think, like, they might somewhat be covering up it up because, like, a lot of the times, like, the thing is I know that there are people in my history class that will try to cover up the fact that they don't, they don't really have an answer to they, that they basically like would just try to like make people laugh and like, instead of making, and kind of like how we mentioned earlier, how instead of them, if instead of people laughing at them for not being, knowing the answer, they would, they'd basically kind of like make fun of, they'd like, turn it into a joke and, like, yeah. kind of uh, <clears throat> redirect the situation. Now, does the school, you know, do they do any kind of discipline on, on class clowns? Like, do the teachers crack down on them or anything? I mean, like, I think, like, they probably would, but I think, like, they kind of are somewhat subdued enough to the point that, like, it doesn't require incredibly harsh discipline. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, you know, teachers are really experts at, at handling class clowns. That's kind of part of the job. Um, by necessity, teachers have to play a key role in dealing with class clowns, both from the perspective of helping their students grow and improve, and also from the functional need to maintain some level of order in the classroom. There are things that teachers can do to help that have proven effective in helping students who have the need to be class clowns. Now, one of the things they do is they get the student involved from day one. 
Give them a role in the class and keep them involved in the lesson. Don't give them any downtime. If they aren't confident in math, don't give them something to do in front of the class that they can't do. That's you know, one of the things they're going to do from a defensive standpoint is be a class clown, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, start with a role like passing things out or taking attendance or writing down answers on the board to problems that other others are giving them answers to. That way, when they are uh, that when there's mistakes, he or she has a hands-on visual of why. As they get more comfortable, we can get them doing more. Another thing teachers can do are that there is a ton of moving parts in the classroom. Just assign them tasks. They will love it. Even the students you don't you think won't will. They all want to feel like they are important and being counted on. Here are a list of tasks for your class clown and that will soon become one of your favorite students. Take attendance at the beginning of every class so they don't get distracted early. Pass out papers, write for you on the board, control the smart board or mirroring system, pick which student answers the next question, and pass out calculators or anything else that needs to be distrib distributed. So do you find that your, your teachers tend to do any of these things to try to keep the kids involved and keep them distracted from being class clowns? I know that, like, my math teacher would kind of, like, have us do extra credit, have people answer questions. My history teacher also kind of, like, tries to get people to answer and normally kind of aims for the people that kind of joke around more. That's a very good point. That was kind of leading into my next question. You know, you're, you're a straight-A student. You're a good student. You like to participate and raise your hand and give answers. Do you find in, in classes where you have these class clowns that the attention shifts away from the good students? Do you feel like you're being uh, neglected or, or you're, there's a detriment to you as a good student because of these class clowns? I mean, like, in terms of at least being called on, I would say some of my teachers kind of noticed that the smart kids um, keep answering questions and let's try to redirect it to other uh, students and it hasn't entirely been the most detrimental but when they don't have the answer and you like kind of have to keep relying on them it gets to a point where it is somewhat detrimental and the closest example I can really come up with is during virtual when we were on AutoCAD um my teacher like wanted kids to participate but certain kids weren't going to be giving the answers and and we're basically saying that they didn't have the worksheet, they didn't have the work, they didn't do it. Um, I was kind of just, and like, my teacher was kind of determined, like, to get them to work. And in a way, it was somewhat detrimental. And I'm pretty sure my other friend, who probably feels the same way about this, can also kind of attest to it. So do you think that the class clowns are disruptive in, in your school? I mean, like... In certain ways, they can be. Um, like, sometimes they can say, like, a stupid response that, like, is meant to be laughed at and, again, distracts from the fact that they might not actually have an answer. Right. Or they might ask a dumb question or something like that just to make people laugh. And, like, at times, like, like they don't do it to an excessive point to the point where it's, like, okay – like, we can we get class going? Like, there are instances where that has happened, and I'm just like, okay, can we move things along, please? Um, but I guess in the whole of it, uh, it's not entirely the worst thing. Do you find them funny or entertaining at all? Uh, not really. It's a thing... <laughs> Everybody's a critic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like their attempts at humor just fall flat for me. Like they just I'm I'm sorry, but the one class clown basically asked the most stupid stuff and like it happens over and over again and at this point I'm just like this sounds stupid. Why do people find this funny? So you're 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 seeking more highbrow humor than anything. And the thing is, this one particular class clown who is still in my classes, in fifth grade, we literally had a notebook where someone would write down everything stupid that he said. 
<laughs> in fifth grade, yes. That existed. Okay. So he's consistently been a class clown then. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Well, we're going to take our last break here, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about how students deal with these class clowns. Might be very interesting. Yeah. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about dealing with class clowns. And now we're going to discuss how to deal with a class clown as a student. And this comes to us from wikihow.com. So while you may get annoyed at a class clown for being annoying and disrupting class as a student, there are ways you can manage your physical and verbal response to, the, to a class clown. Instead of allowing them to get a reaction out of you, try some of these tips. The first tip we have is to calm and center yourself. Annoying class clowns tend to bring out the worst in us. When you feel yourself getting frustrated and overwhelmed by the actions of those around you, take a moment to compose yourself. This is important to ensure that your mind is clear and, that, and to avoid any irrational responses. Take a long, deep breath in, followed by a slow exhale. Continue to take deep breaths until you feel in control of your words and actions. It might help that, while you're breathing, focus on one simple mantra instead of your annoying classmate. I think that's safe advice anytime you get angry at anything. Yeah. The other option you have is to choose to remain silent. When an annoying classmate intentionally or perhaps unintentionally pesters, teases, or provokes you, the only thing you have control over is how you respond. Don't fuel their negative behavior with poor behavior of your own. Choose to remain silent. Silence is not equivalent to weakness or cowardliness. Rather, it can be the mark of a strong individual who has control over their emotions. While some situations benefit from inaction and in, in actions, others do require our attention. If a classmate is bullying you or others, stand up for what is right. And, and when we say stand up, again, we've, we've done talk bullying here. We're not saying go jump into the fight or get into the fray, but do what's right. Get, get a teacher involved, get an authority involved, let somebody know that something is happening and get the help that's needed. Don't just turn the other cheek and walk away and let it continue to happen. Mm -hmm. you, should, you should also check your nonverbal responses. In addition to expressing our annoyance with witty remarks and spiteful com comments, our bodies also convey our annoyance with eye rolls, mutters, and disgruntled faces. If you are truly going to ignore your annoying classmate, you need to limit or minimize your physical response to their behavior, too. Don't groan, sigh, or roll your eyes when they do or say something that gets on your nerves. And I probably need to take this advice because that does happen to me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So you should also put the incident in perspective. At the moment, it's easy to fixate on the annoying behaviors of others. The quirks can consume our thoughts and drive us mad. To prevent... To prevent ourselves from overreacting, you must ask yourself this. Does their annoying behavior negatively affect my life beyond this moment? Most of the time, the answer is no. One of the most obvious things you can do is just pay no attention to the class clown. Jokers or class clowns devote their time and energy to providing comic relief for the classroom. When you're in the mood for the class clown's antics, their jokes are hilarious. 
and when you're not in the mood, their attempts at humor can drive you mad. Since glass clowns thrive on the reaction from their crowd, the best way to ignore a joker is to have no physical or verbal reaction to their jokes. Glass clowns aim to please and are highly sensitive to criticism. If you can't remain silent, a choice remark could put a temporary end to their comedy bit. If you get in trouble for something the class clown did, don't overreact. Remain calm and ask the teacher to speak with you after the class. When you're speaking one-on-one with the teacher, explain your side of the story and apologize for any inconvenience you may have caused. And work with your teacher to develop a plan on how to avoid situations like this in the future. And, you know, basically the overriding sentiment here is be the bigger person, be the mature person, be the rational person in this case, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you, you mentioned the one about, you know, no eye rolling and, and nonverbal responses. How do you think these things would help you to deal with the class clowns you have to deal with? I mean, like, I know we've act. I know that you and I have actually had talks about this when I come home complaining about annoying classmates. You normally just say the best way is to not give them a reaction. Kind of, and this is basically kind of what this is saying. Like, don't really give them a reaction. They don't kind of, they just don't really deserve it. And, and, and you know, in the grand scheme of things, you're responsible for your own actions. And if someone eggs you on and gets you to react, then you're kind of losing that control, right? You're letting them control you at that point. And I don't know. From my perspective, I always found that to be very unsatisfactory to me when someone can provoke me into a response like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think self-control is a little bit more satisfying to me. Um, but, you know, people get on your nerves. And knowing how to deal with that is going to help you in life. Because trust me, I I haven't been in school in a long time, and there are a lot of other people annoying in my life that I have to deal with on a regular basis, day in and day out, you know, between work or customers or people in the store or rude drivers. So the techniques that they teach you here really are good techniques that work in just about any situation. You know, how do you control when, when someone provokes you or elicits an emotional reaction from you, how do you usually deal with that? I normally at least try to push it off. And, like, occasionally I will do, like, the eye rolls and just groan slightly. I try not to get a huge reaction. Uh, I try not to make a huge reaction. Like, I don't try to scream at them. I kind of just mutter to myself saying, man, this person's really annoying. Yeah, I have this gaming group that I talk to, you know, where we do voice chat a lot. And there's one or two people that get in there that can be very annoying for, for different reasons. And I used to let it get to me and I used to get angry. And when I got angry enough, I would just log off and, and not even play the game anymore. And I've kind of gotten to the point that I'm determined to not let other people make those decisions for me. You know, I want to play the game. I enjoy playing the game. So I'm not going to log off. So someone doesn't annoy me. I'm just going to ignore them. And this one particular person who always puts a jab in every, every time you say something, you get some kind of smart remark back from them. And they do that strictly to get a reaction out of you. And for the longest time, they were getting reactions out of me. And then, I don't know, a week or so ago, I just, I was tired of dealing with them. So I'll make a statement in chat answering someone's question. They'll throw that jab out there and they'll wait for me to respond. And I don't. And then there's dead silence on the chat channel. And it makes this individual's comments stand out as highly inappropriate when that happens. Mm. And they felt very foolish at that. So it's one of those things where they'll crack a joke or a smart remark and you get nothing. You get, you don't even get crickets chirping Hmm. and it shuts them down immediately. And that same technique works in most social situations. 
I just wish other kids were kind of like that. Well, and that's the thing. The, the problem is, is that class clowns are class clowns because they get an audience. Yeah. And as long as they continue to get an audience, they'll be class clowns. And the reality is a lot of kids want some kind of distraction in class, especially if it's a long class or yeah. you're doing a lot of work and you're kind of deep into the class at this point in time. Kids all want a distraction. Uh, so they kind of welcome that. Even if they might not find it funny, it's that chance to sort of come up for a breath of air, you know? Yeah, and that's why I feel like I'm not a class clown. In fact, I'm probably the exact opposite of a class clown because – I want class to continue, and a lot of people probably see me as a complete bore. I've even had people who make comments about the fact that, like, we're just trying to have fun, jeez. And then it's like, okay, well, this isn't really the place for it, but fine. Right. And, and again, that's not just a school thing. You're going to find in professional life, you know, you'll be sitting in meetings, and, and you'll have meetings that drag on and drag on. And I'm usually the type of person in a meeting who tries to crack a joke and and get people to react to it. That's more to wake people up than to entertain them at that point hmm. in time. Because sometimes we're in some really long meetings and and I've seen people not off in our meetings. Wow. Uh, so, you know, they're coping mechanisms. We all have different coping mechanisms for different different triggers. You know, they could be stress triggers. They could be anxiety they could be insecurities and we all do something right you have your own way of coping with things that you're not comfortable with um so but your ways tend to not not impact others do they not really no in fact i try not to bother people for the most part i've learned from those mistakes yeah so and that's really where the problem with class clowns come from is that they can be that disruptive presence um, it's okay to have fun once in a while. It's okay to crack a joke in school once in a while and, and maybe lighten the tension a bit. But when it's allowed to continue on too far and it starts being a detriment to everyone learning, then you kind of have to step in. The teacher really has to step in at that point in time and kind of bring some control back to it. Mm -hmm. So I think that was all we had to talk about today. All righty. We will uh, take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing remarks. All righty. Go for your closing thoughts. All righty. So to everyone out there, I just wanted to say that while class clowns aren't the most problematic student, they can definitely become quite problematic very quickly. And I definitely think we tried to cover pretty much every outlook, whether it be the parent of a class clown, the teacher of a class clown, or the fellow student of a class clown. I definitely know I'm going to try to take some of this advice when dealing with class clowns on my own, and I would definitely recommend all of you who have to deal with class clowns to take as much advice from us as you can. And I definitely, it definitely helped me to kind of bring a different perspective on this and I def and I hoped it also helped you to bring a different perspective on this as well. All right. Excellent uh, advice. Great take on it. And uh, maybe after this, you'll be a little bit more tolerant of class clowns as long as they don't get too carried away. Yeah. So I think there's a place for them out there. They certainly do help from time to time. Yeah. Uh, before we do go, I would want to once again, invite folks to subscribe to the podcast you can find us listed as Insights into Teens for our audio versions or Insights into Things for our video versions. We're listed on Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, uh, Buzzsprout, Amazon, any place you can get a podcast, really. <clears throat> I would also invite you to subscribe or to reach out to us, rather, and email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We'd love to hear from you. We're also on Twitter at insights underscore things. We do stream five days a week uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate it if you threw that our way. Audio versions of this podcast can be found on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. 
Video versions of this podcast can be found on the web as well at podcast.insightsintothings.com. Or you can get links to all those and much more on our website at insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Excellent. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.